Corby. Set, get wet with Simeon Corby and Elaine Hill. Oh, welcome to Get Wet. 10,000 gallons of watery mayhem. So wet, in fact, it's wetter than a lobster's lipstick. It, it is. And what a lovely image. I'll tell you what, go and sort the first game out. <laughs> OK. And just before we start that first game, come up here while I tell you what Get Wet is all about. We have two teams competing today. As they build up points, they win prizes. But the team with the most points gets to come up here at the end of the show on our genuine real-life shipwreck. Now, the reason they're up here is because somewhere concealed on this ship is today's star prize. It's the big one. It is the big kahuna. Only one of our teams will get to search for that prize, though. They look both up here and, really cool, they get to scuba dive down there in the murky depths next to that harbour wall. So let's meet the teams competing on the show today. First of all, the green team are Louise and Tom, the Biggleswave Beavers! And the orange team are Louise and Chris, the heart of Midlothian Dragons! See how they get on with our first challenge, the big splash. The big splash is the first game where the team start picking up the points that lead to those big prizes. And of course, hopefully competing for the final place in the chess quest. But first of all, the teams come down the chute here and they serve over to the valve, turning the wheel because it operates the water cannon at the other side of the pool. <laughs> and they get to have a lot of fun with these. But only once they reach this part, they've got a few more obstacles yet. Then the teams have to help each other up this very slippery slope. All along the way, they're collecting the balloons. The bronze are worth five, the silver are worth ten. And the further they get, the more tricky they are to get your hands on. That's right, because I would probably say those silver balloons are the hardest to get, because these balance beams are extremely slippery. So the teams have to get themselves along to the end. <laughs> Jump in getting onto these huge wonder wheels and then working their way across the pool, picking up the balloons to the pontoon with Simmers. It's worth their while getting up here because they'll find a gold doubloon worth a nice fine 20 points. Once they've got that slapped on their suit, they can get busy with the water cannon, giving whoever's left in the pool a nice drink with a face full of water from the water cannon. Now, there's 100 points available to each team in this game and only two minutes to collect them, so it should be pretty frantic. Let's give them a huge send-off as we say... Ready, set, get wet! <laughs> Under the water they go and turn on those valves. Go on, teams, get them water cannons running. It's the Beavers versus the Dragons in our first showcase game, the Big Splash. And who's up for that first? Up that slippery slope, come the Beavers. I think that's Louise, is it? Hard to tell from here. Yes, Louise leading the way. OK, can she grab those silver and balloons? So each worth ten points. Oh, she had a fingertip on it. OK, come on, Tom, you can do it. Yes, Tom has that silver and balloon worth ten points. OK, let's see how Louise is going to do for the dragon. She gets one. Now, really, it's all down to Chris. He's only got... Just has one thing to grab and he'll have ten points in the bag for the dragon score. Hey, he gets it. OK, successfully through that and he's ready. Louise for the green team. The Beavers have made their way to the pontoon. I'm sure that must be record time. She can't get out of her wonder wheel, though. She's trying to get on the... D She's there on the pontoon. Now a 20 point balloon to be collected and she can have fun with those water cannons. She snaps that balloon. Get busy with that cannon, get blasting the orange team, and she does in fine style. And Chris is blasted in the face and knocked into the water by the force of Louise's water cannon. He's still collecting, though. And meanwhile, the other Louise, Louise from the Dragons, the orange team, has got her water cannon ready. Oh, she's going to can't you see this happening. Tom, look out! He's going to get a face full of water. <laughs> he doesn't care, though. He doesn't care. He's still collecting points. These two guys are doing brilliantly at that wonder wheel. And the girls are showing no mercy with those cannons. Time's running out, though. That's it. Time is up. A fine effort by both of our teams. 
Let's count up how many tokens, how many doubloons they got, and look at the scores. Well, Sim, the Biggleswade Beavers have 45 points, but in the lead, the Midlothian Dragons on 95! <laughs> by the dragons what <laughs> absolutely <laughs> well you certainly performed well and of course the more points these people gain the more prizes they'll be taking home today on the show level one 75 points you'll have absolutely no excuse for slipping in now with this talking alarm clock level two 100 points get clicking and catch all the action on this snaptastic sports camera level three 125 points net yourself a great game of this fabulous badminton set Level 4, 150 points. Splash into action and get wet with this brilliant set of aqua gear. Yeah! Well, some rather nice prizes to be picked up on today's show. There are, but don't forget there's a star prize on the shipwreck when one of our teams goes forward for the chess quest. Yeah, that's at the end of the show. But before we can reveal that, it's time to put a few more points on the scoreboard, hopefully, as we play Brainwaves. OK, this is how Brainwaves works. It's basically a true or false quiz. Elaine and I have three statements each, all about general sports. The problem is, some of them are completely made up, aren't they? Yes, they are. All our teams <laughs> have to do is decide which are true and which are false. Every correct answer is worth five points, so a possible 15 to be gained here. They elect a spokesperson. We've got both the Louises volunteering to be spokesperson for this particular round. So, Elaine, fire away. OK. In July 1997, Tim Henman and Greg Rudeski were the first two British men to reach the quarter-finals of Wimbledon since 1961. True or false? True. It is. <laughs> in the 1984 Olympics, Carl Lewis won the same four gold medals as Jesse Owens won in 1936. True or false? False. It's true. British golfer Laura Davis won the 1996 Rolex Player of the Year award. True or false? True. It is true. Two out of three. Well done. Good performance by the Dragons. Things are really hotting up in here. Let's see if the Beavers can do a little bit of catching up. Gary and Philip Neville are the only brothers to have played in the same England team since the 1966 World Cup. True or false? False. It is false because Bobby and Jackie Charlton did as well. The Grand Slam is the expression used to describe the achievement of winning the world's four major tennis championships in the same calendar year. True or false? True. It is true. And finally, Steve Redgrave and Matthew Pinsent won gold in the men's coxless pairs in the 1996 Olympics. True. It is true. Good performance. Three out of three for the Beavers, which must surely have affected the scores. It has indeed, Sim, for the Beavers now have 60 points, but the Dragons still in the lead with 105! So, the Beavers are catching up. They're narrowing the gap. Yep, plenty more points to get yet, though, and I'm going off now to get the next game ready. OK. It's time for the team to get back in the water, get nice and wet, while they drip dry. For this game, there is a variety of clothing lying at the bottom of the pool. The teams have to dive in, get each bit of clothing and thread it onto this rope here. The winning team is the team with the most items of clothes on the rope. Every item of clothing successfully threaded onto the clothesline is worth five points. So plenty of points in the water, but only one minute to find them. So beavers and dragons, stand by. Ready, set, get wet!
thing. <laughs> There's got to be easier ways of doing the laundry than that, hasn't there? We're going to pull the washing lines tight and count the clothing and see how those scores look. Well, Sim, the Beavers have 85 points now, but the Dragon's still in the lead with 130. Now, the Beavers and the Dragons both have this fabulous little talking clock. The Dragons also have the badminton set and the sports camera. Still to play for, this fabulous set of aqua gear. This is turning into a really high-scoring game, isn't it? It is, but there's still one more game to play yet. Yep. Before we get to that game, though, it's time to play round two of Brainwaves. Which is a lot like round one, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's still a true or false round, but only one member from each team plays. There are six questions at the same time. And today's theme is sailors and sailing. And when you hear those statements, you don't shout the answer out. You indicate it with your little light here. Red for false, green for true. This way, neither of you will know what the other team is guessing. Every correct answer is worth five points, so a possible 30 points here. And believe me, these points really matter. Lord Nelson was the Admiral of the Fleet at the Battle of Trafalgar. True or false? It is true. Well done. Sailing was a song made famous by Phil Collins. True or false? It is false. It was Rod Stewart. Captain Smith commanded the Titanic. True or false? It is true. Sir Francis Chichester was the first sailor to sail around the world alone with only one stop. True or false? It was true. Oh, both wrong. Popeye the Sailor Man's favourite vegetable is cauliflower. <laughs> false. Well done. It is spinach. You both knew that one. Tracy Edwards and her crew abandoned their attempt on the round-the-world non-stop record for the trophy Jules Verne on their 43rd day at sea. True or false? It was true. Well, they obviously both watched the news. Well done, guys. You can relax now. Six quite tough questions, and let's see how that's affected the scoreboard. Well, Sim, the Beavers have 105 points, but still in the lead, the Dragons with 145! <laughs> The Beavers have a bit of catching up to do, so it's all to play for as our teams take on the Dive of Danger. For this game, we have a pyramid and a number of dry sponges, and each team member has a dry box. What they have to do is dive off their platform with their box, under the pyramid, into the middle, taking a sponge and diving back underneath the pyramid, back to the platform. And there are 16 sponges inside that pyramid, so for every dry sponge they do get across, they earn five points. That's a possible 80 points that can be gained here, but only one and a half minutes on this game, so the pressure's really on. So, teams, stand by. Ready, set, get wet! Chris and Louise dive into the pool and get the first sponge into their box. Chris seems to be making a bit of headway here. You can't get the lid on this box. It's always the way, isn't it? Same when you put your packed lunch together in the morning. You could never get the lid on. Now, the key to this game is to get the sponges back dry. <laughs> that one's a bit down, Chris. The judges will be having a look at that one. The key is to take your time with the packing. You've got to make sure the lid's on nice and tight. Even when the pressure's on and the time's running out, it's worth getting it right because the judges will be doing a small moisture test on the sponges to see how dry they are. Now, just in case you haven't realised, the reason this game is so difficult is because the contestants have to dive nearly five feet under the water to get under the bottom bar on this pyramid. You can just see that Chris is, I think he's dropped his lid. Oh, that's a spanner in the world. But he's got it back and he's dived underneath and back into the pyramid. So as I was saying, the bottom bar on that pyramid, you can see the one with the great padding on, they have to go all the way down under there. So in case of taking a deep breath and diving as deep and as fast as you can. Now we currently see that the dragons are making good progress here. Chris has got three sponges back. Louise has got two when she gets this one out. Chris is going to go for a fourth, but I think the time might run out. That's it. Hold everything. A fine effort by the dragons. Let's see how the beavers do on their dive of danger. Green team, stand by. Ready, set, get wet! 
the water, we've got the Piggles Wave Beavers, but already we have a bit of a mistake from the lead. As I'm jumping into the water, team loses on lunchbox. That's all you need. Okay, they're both in the pyramid. Louise gets the sponge in, wax the lid on, and Tom is doing likewise. Tom's having a bit of a lift on. <laughs> Come on, Tom, you can do it. Under you go, there he goes. Now they're both back at their platforms. Get those sponges out, and I'll count that as a nice, happy 10 points. Okay, now, mathematically, I have been working it out, and it is possible for the Beavers to catch up and overtake the Dragons on this game. 80 points in that pyramid. They would simply have to be the fastest swimmers in the universe to do it. But it is worth them going as fast as they can, because the more points the Beavers gain, the further up the prize pile they go. They'll be taking more goodies home with them the more dry sponges they get back to their table. Go on, Louise, that's another one on the table. Where's Tom? What's he doing? He's up, he's down, he's up, he's down again. Oh, here he is, he's got underneath and over to the platform. Very, very tricky and takes so much energy this game because not only are these guys having to work hard doing the swimming, but you have to take a massive breath to get down to the very bottom of the pool, get underneath that bottom bar and get inside the pyramid. The big dive. Come on, Louise, get it across. The music's ending. Time up, time up. A brilliant, brilliant effort by the Beavers. Before we check out those final scores, just look at how much energy it takes to take on the dive of danger. Oh, tricky old game, that one. And it has left us with a final score. It has indeed. The final score is the Beavers have 130 points, but this week's chess questers are the Dragons with 170! So well done to the Dragons, but commiserations to the Beavers. You were brilliant, all the way from Biggles Wade, and you've had a brilliant day, I hope. Yeah. Thank you very much, Louise. Have you enjoyed yourself, Tom? Yeah, it's been brilliant, thanks. And the good news is that you've won loads of prizes. In fact, that last game just put you over the next level, so they've won brilliant prizes, haven't they, Elaine? Yes, they have each won a clock, a sports camera and a badminton set and bag. So well done to both of you. Top yes. performance, guys. I think it's time for you to swim for home. Please go, Matt, show your appreciation for Tom and Louise, the Biggles Wade Beavers! Thanks, guys. And now time for Chris and Louise to make their way with Elaine to get kitted up in their scuba gear and their helmet and everything because the time has arrived for us to play the chest quest. In the space of just three minutes, our contestants could win this brilliant star prize. Well, there'll be hours of fun and excitement with this PlayStation complete with the latest games. And get this, you get the telly too! A PlayStation, a TV to watch it on, and a bunch of games, each for Chris and Louise, if they can open this chest. Uh, as you can see at the moment, the chest is locked, of course. Two big chains and two hefty padlocks securing it. All Chris and Louise have to do is find those two keys that will unlock the locks and win them that star prize. So this is how it works. I'll give each of our contestants the first key on their quest. And in Louise's case, because she's up on the wreck today, that'll bring her here to her first chest. When she opens it, she'll find an item inside. It could be something like this. And that would take her onto her next challenge on the shipwreck. Now, if it were this, it could bring her under here, where she'd find a big cupboard. You'd have to pry the planks off with the crowbar, open the door, and find inside the next key. And there's a whole sequence of these things. At the same time, though, down under the water, Chris, with his scuba gear on, will be taking on a completely different set of underwater challenges. Now, as you can see, Chris is getting kitted up at the moment, and Louise is just getting her helmet on. Elaine will be under the water with him, so she's getting her gear on as well. And our safety divers are in position under the water just to make sure nothing can go wrong with the scuba diving. Now, every time we play the quest, of course, we make our contestants do a different route. So let's see today's chest quest route. Louise's first key will, of course, open the treasure chest, then across the deck to blow the magazine. The race is now on, then, to prize open the packing cases, then to the foredeck to smash those barrels. 
Next, down to the main deck to raid the ship's larder where she'll find her golden key. Meanwhile, down below, Chris must open the sunken chest, across to ransack the lifeboat, then up to the harbour wall to open the watertight door. Down to the depths now to the lead casket where he'll find his golden key. Now the contestants are ready, so please make some noise as we welcome back Chris and Louise, the heart of Midlothian Dragons! Well, Louise, you've seen the prize, a PlayStation plus the TV to watch it on and a bunch of games for each of you if you complete this quest. How do you feel right now? Nervous. Well, you needn't be, you needn't be. We've all got confidence in you. Are you feeling confident? Feasibly, yeah. Good for you. You've just got to run like the wind, go as fast as you can. Elaine will be down there and she'll put the finishing touches to any challenges underwater. Just make sure everything is in place. The quest begins with this key. I give each of our contestants the first key. Louise, there is yours. That will open the first chest. After that, only you can do it. It's up to you. Just go as fast as you can. Chris, if you're just about ready to stand up, uh, I have the first key here for you. This will open your first chest underwater. After that, it's up to you. We're all behind you guys. Good luck. Let's start the chest quest. Give them a huge send-off in five, four, three, Two, one, go! Close. Louise, you've just won yourself a PlayStation plus loads of other prizes. How do you feel? Great. Okay. Oh, good for you. Chris, well done. You look so tired. How did it go? Oh, it was good. Well done, mate. You've come away with loads of prizes. Been great contestants. We'll see you soon for more Get Wet. Bye-bye.